Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's media briefing. I am James Alexander. I'm the branch chief for media relations here at the National Cancer Institute. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and that's why we're here. We want to share the latest on our tomosynthesis mammographic imaging screening trial, better known as TMIST, T-M-I-S-T. So we want to start today with three presentations for you, and then we'll open the floor for questions. And when we get to the question and answer period, you can ask your questions verbally by unmuting yourself, or you can enter your question in the uh, chat. Now, to make the conversation easier today, we're going to make every one of you a panelist. So this means that everyone we will be able to see your chat messages. You cannot message anyone privately. And also note that we will mute everyone except the speaker. Also, today's presentation is being recorded for those who cannot attend uh, or even stay the entire time. So let's get started. Let me introduce our three speakers for you today. We'll hear first from Dr. Werder McCaskill Stevens. Dr. McCaskill Stevens is a medical oncologist and director of the National Cancer, Cancer Institute's Community Oncology Research Program, and we call it NCORP, N-C-O-R-P. As the NCORP director, she oversees the program supporting community hospitals, physicians, and others to participate in NCI-approved cancer clinical trials, including the trial we're here to talk about today, TMS. Next, we will hear from Dr. Edda Pisano. Dr. Pisano uh, is the TMIST uh, study chair for that trial. She is also the chief research officer at the American College of Radiology. And then we're gonna move over to Mrs. Marsha Dukes. She is a TMIST participant and she is from South Carolina and she is here along with uh, or through Prisma Health. So thank you, Dr. McCaskill Stevens. I'm going to turn the uh, conversation over to you right now to get us started. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be a participant. Breast cancer screening is an important component in the continuum of breast cancer and its management. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report that the overall percentage of women who have reported having had a mammogram in the past two years is 70%. There are little differences between white women and black or African American women. However, the percentage is lower in Hispanic and Asian women, and this number drops to 30 to 40 percent among women who are underinsured or uninsured. This percentage is also lower in those women who don't have a source of care, and those women who are at lower levels of education. Rates of breast cancer screening decreased during the COVID 19 pandemic. Screening rates have not rebounded as such as expected during the first half of 2021. However, it's called, this has caused quite a bit of concern with delays in imaging as well as concerns about excesses of mortality that in future years. Women must be screened for breast cancer and the TMIS aligns with that need. It also aligns with the need to address research gaps in screening for breast cancer. There's a need for women to be screened because it is the most common cancer in women, both in the US and worldwide. 2D mammography is an image technique that takes pictures from two sides of the breast, creating a flat image. In contrast to what we see in 3D mammography images, in which the images are taken from different angles and around the breast and then builds a 3D image. This minimizes the overlap of structures that we often see in 2D, which obscure the detection of some breast cancers, particularly in those women who have dense breasts. We don't know, however, if 3D is better than 2D at finding breast cancer before they become very difficult to treat. TMIS is the first randomized clinical trial to compare 2D and 3D digital mammography for breast cancer screening. It's going to provide critical information about the effectiveness of screening and breast cancer, and also importantly, help women make informed decisions about mammogram in the future. This also will provide scientific evidence for the physicians about the benefits and harms of screening, particularly in the context of new technology. NCI is helping to promote the study because it will advance breast cancer detection 
and ensure that all women have access for diverse and geographical locations. Women of all backgrounds will contribute to this study to improve our understanding of the biology of the necessary intervals for screening and move us toward personalizing screening or precision screening simply by getting their routine mammograms. As mentioned, INCOR is MCI's clinical trials network. It's really designed to make clinical trials available in the communities in which the individual lives. It has three, seven research bases that really conduct the studies and clinical trials and take them to the community, such as the ECOG Akron research base that's leading TMIS. There are 46 community sites throughout the country, including Puerto Rico and Guam. 14 of these sites are targeted to minority and underserved sites. Having in core sites participate in the study will ensure that the country ensures that women across the country will have an opportunity to participate in this trial, but also their mammographers and the imaging teams are represented in this very important trial. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Etta Pisano. I'm the TMIS study chair, and I'm going to be telling you a little more about TMIS today. We really are um, asking a question that has not been answered yet about the newer technology tomosynthesis. Um, whether um, whether tomosynthesis actually finds the life-threatening cancers, um, the ones most likely to um, cause cost a woman her life. Um, if, if we we could run a randomized trial with mortality endpoints, but that would take way too long. It would take over th up to 30 years. So what we decided instead was to estimate mortality through the, through the measurement of the numbers of advanced cancers or life-threatening cancers in the population. The idea being um, that if these go down with the tomosynthesis technology that we are um, likely saving those women's lives. Um, Life-threatening cancers are the ones that are treated with chemotherapy. They're the kind that are more likely to kill women, and that's why chemotherapy is given, because it is not the breast cancer itself that is likely to kill a woman. It is the distant metastases, and chemotherapy is given to reduce the risk of those distant metastases. So again, the most important point about this is that um, the, an effective screening test should reduce those life-threatening cancers over time. You wouldn't expect that necessarily to happen in one round of screening. So TEMIS does uh, three to five rounds of screening to measure this effect. It's a randomized trial. Asymptomatic women are presenting, are, who present at the TEMIS centers for screening are being enrolled between ages 45 and 74. They can't have prior history of breast cancer or be pregnant or lactating. Women are being randomized after consent, of course, to either tomosynthesis or digital mammography for screening, either annually or biennially. The biennial uh, group is, has, has no significant risk factors for breast cancer. In addition, we have a biorepository effort as part of TEMIS. It's completely voluntary. The patients can agree or not. They participate in TMIS. If they want to submit blood or buccal smears, they're welcome to. Um, we really encourage it because we hope that that information, the genetic information that they're sharing through those samples can be used to help us individualize screening strategies. We know that breast cancer screening doesn't work for all women. We still have women dying for breast cancer. We still have women in some population groups dying disproportionately to their representation in the population. So we really believe there is a need to individualize um, screening strategies, not one size fits all based on your age. It really, TEMIS really is the fastest growing of the NCI sponsored trials. Um, with at this point, this was the peak of the COVID pandemic in April 2020 when the mammography sites in the United States essentially shut down. That's April of 2020. You can see we've recovered very well which with now 56,516 women enrolled as of noon today. And enrollment doubled during the TMIS pandemic. I mean, during the COVID pandemic. Um, some other points to make about um, about the population. We're very proud of this. In the U.S. population, we have 
um, 19, almost 20% African American women. Um, and it, for Hispanics worldwide, we have about 37% of the population enrolling in TMIST. Um, there are other points to make as well about the benefits of TMIST participation. Um, many people, especially in areas where tomosynthesis has really um, taken over uh, or think, you know, people believe that it's the most common or very widely available. Well, it's only actually less than 50% of the accredited mammography facilities in the U.S. or accredited systems in the U.S. are TOMO. So more than 50% are 2D, as described by Dr. McCaskill-Stevens a moment ago. And in fact, 21% of U.S. facilities don't even have 3D yet. So there's a real um, lack of distribution, if you will. And TMIST, if, you, if it's open in your community, you know that you'll have access to TOMO synthesis. Um, in addition, we are paying, the study is paying for women to have mammograms if they qualify for cost-free care at the participating sites. So there is a fund allowing women to get access to mammography if they participate in TMIST. And finally, I mentioned already, but it bears repeating, we really do hope to figure out how women might get individualized screening not just the one size fits all annual screening that has been recommended. We really believe that there are likely to be improvements in screening based on what we learned from TMIS that will allow us to individualize for the populate, the various um, features of the populations being screened. Finally, I just wanna close with this map. I'm not sure if you can see this other, I, I'm uh, unhappy that I can't hide that thing, but um, let me just say that, um, the map is very impressive. We have 32 sites in the US open. I'm sorry, we have a total of 114 sites and that represents 32 states in the US. You can see the dots on the map represent, the blue dots represent NCORP, the squares represent non-NCORP or uh, other kinds of sites, the Community Oncology Research Program are the blue dots. And um, that's 32 states represented. And this pretty much reflects the distribution of tomosynthesis systems in the United States. Obviously not every state is represented that has tomosynthesis, but this is very similar to the way tomosynthesis is, is distributed in the US. In addition, we have seven sites in Canada, and as I mentioned, a site in Argentina and another site in um, South Korea. So that's that's my um, briefing on on uh, TMIST, and I thank you for your attention today. And I'm happy to answer whatever questions um, you might have after the next presenter. Okay, Mrs. Dukes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you sound great. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay, my name is Marsha Deuce, and I'm with Prisma Health um, Cancer Institute here in Greenville, South Carolina. And um, I guess the reason why I joined the uh, TMIS uh, study is because me being as an African American woman, I do not think that we participate in programs that could and sometimes be beneficial to us. And I'm hope by me participating in the study will encourage other African American women to be more open to this kind of studies. And I also think that it's important for women and especially African American women to uh, take part in the study because of our health is so important to our community and our family members. And um, as far as considering the uh, joining the program. The study, uh, it's nothing hard about it. It's very easy. And I hope that with this study, it will bring about a change and especially um, in the area of breast imaging. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much to all three of our presenters, uh, Dr. McCaskill Stevens, Dr. Pisano, and you just heard from Mrs. Dukes from South Carolina. So what we'd like to do now is open the floor for any questions that we have uh, for our, our guests here from the media. So just to remind you, you can put your question in the chat or you can simply unmute and verbalize uh, wh whatever your inquiry is and we'll go from there. So we'd like to begin now. Does anyone have any questions or?
Three great presentations. So I'm sure somebody's got some uh, questions that they'd like to follow up on. And this uh, update on our trial. Okay, questions going once. There's one in the oh, chat. How, okay, how can a woman find a TEMIS site? Uh, there is a website that shows all the TEMIS sites. Um, I don't have the, um, I think Wordham might know the exact website initials to share with people. I don't know it off the top of my head, I'm afraid. But there is one, I think. I'll, I'll Google it while we're, <laughs> while we're. Well, thank you, uh, Edna. One of the things that we have uh, encouraged uh, women to go to is call the 1-800 uh, for cancer um, number or www.clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, I think we're in the process of preparing a special website that will be much more comprehensive, but those are the methods by which one can uh, find the studies at this time. There's um, the website I just found is at the www.cancer.gov. Um, there's a sub page for TMS that lists the sites. So that's the best way to find it. But I would try again to see if we have any uh, questions here. One thing I thought about real quickly is, is, is it, is it, uh, I think it might be valuable to the reporters here to give a timeline for the TMS study, maybe just a general overview there timeline. So, um, we're expecting to be recruiting for another uh, 3 years through the September of 2024. Um, and then we'll be following the women who participate. They'll be getting screened and getting followed up till uh, September of 2027. So, um, we expect to, um, it may. You know, may end earlier than that, but we're that's the current plan is to publish our results in 2027. I think there was one in the chat that just came up. Uh, how 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 will this bring personalized screening to women? So um, we, the study itself is um, collecting an enormous amount of data of all different types, not just mammography data, but information about the women who are participating, demographic data, health data, family history data, all sorts of different information. The images themselves um, and, a lot, and the genetic material that women are donating. All of that uh, we expect will be fed into a, a mathematical model that will allow us um, with the outcome data, of course, with women who develop cancer, women who unfortunately succumb to that cancer, with, you know, we're gonna know the outcomes for these women, lots and lots of women, 100, 165,000 women. So at the end, we can figure out what, what might work better for each individual group. We have enough, we have lots and lots of African-American women in the study. Um, so we'll be able to, we hope, make, make uh, inferences about um, what worked better for African American women, um, not just the technology, but the frequency of the screening. We're, you know, we know that we're not doing as well as we should for all populations. Um, there are still many women dying of breast cancer in the United States and around the world. Or did you want to add anything to that? Well, I think you know. I just like to add that you know we we have come from knowing that breast cancer is not just one disease and that we have subtypes, but there's still much more to learn. So I think the fact that we are evaluating all biopsies, the benign, pre-malignant, as well as the, the malignant one, that we'll actually be able to uh, develop additional biological information from them, as well as just the importance of having a biorepository, which allows us to employ techni technology as it develops, as it always does. And I just thought of one other thing, just listening to you, uh... Uh, both uh, provide those uh, previous uh, responses. And this is for Mrs. Dukes. Uh, uh, I think your camera's off now, but if you can hear us, as an African-American woman who is participating in this trial, do you think there are any special messages or any special approaches that need to be taken to get more women to uh, you know, understand what this is about and, and to take part in it? Um, I think if we could get out more into the community, I think when, um, I was asked to do this. I uh, said that I would love to pass out like the 
pamphlets or booklets or something to try to give like to family and friends. I think just getting the news uh, out into the community uh, really will help. When I was approached, I was actually getting my mammogram done and uh, uh, I was approached by one of the nurses would I be interested in the in the study. And I told him yes, you know, that I would be because I thought it would be real good for our community. And uh, I think if it's a way that we can just have it some kind, I guess some way of community base and getting the news out. Uh, if you have like if churches that have health programs, mm -hmm. you know, um, can can help share that there. Uh, with the churches, ch with the churches, uh, diff just different ways of getting the news out into the community. Okay. And uh, just a quick follow up to you. So, have you talked to any of your friends and family to help? Uh, I have. Okay. I have. Yes, I have. Okay, great. Terrific. So, we will take one last crack at it. If, if there's anyone else that has any questions or any points they want to bring up, this is the time to do it. Okay, well, I think that's a wrap and uh, thank you everyone for your participation today, especially to our presenters. And if you have any follow up questions, just reach out to us in the NCI press office. Uh, our email address is NCI press officers, all one word, plural at mail, M A I L dot N I H dot gov. Many of you have that, but just in case, feel free to reach out to us and we can follow up with you uh, for you with any of the researchers and also Mrs. Dukes. Thank you for attending today. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Thank you James. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. And bye bye.